Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we have a showdown between two incredible American sports cars. The new Corvette Z51 versus the Shelby GT500. And what we're going to be discussing is why the lower horsepower Corvette Z51 actually is faster to 60 miles per hour versus the GT500. Now I actually got the chance to check out both of these in person at Monterey Car Week and I think the new GT500 is one of the best looking cars out there today as far as modern cars are concerned. I love the way it looks and I really like the way the new Corvette looks as well. But looks are subjective. Looks don't really matter. I'm sure some people uh, out there think both of them are hideous or perhaps like one a lot more than the other. The numbers are important regardless. These are objective measurements uh, and it turns out the Z51, uh, as Chevy claims, will hit 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds versus the mid threes for the GT500 at 3.5 seconds about. So with the GT500, 760 horsepower, significantly more than the Corvette's 495. So how in the world is that Corvette able to accelerate faster to 60 miles per hour? We're also gonna look at some other parameters. So I've got all kinds of different numbers here. Some of them we know, some of them we don't know. Looking at weight uh, and looking at the GT500, 4,225 pounds versus 3,577 pounds. So is that why it's slower? No, that's not why it's slower. Even if this number is accurate right here, uh, which we don't know for certain, but the GT500 is certainly gonna be heavy, even if this is accurate, it still has a much better power to weight ratio uh, with just 5.56 pounds per horsepower versus 7.23 pounds per horsepower. Now I know some people are gonna get upset because we're using Freedom Units in this video, but it's a video about two Freedom cars, so we're using Freedom Units, uh, and then we'll get into a little bit of metric later because it's actually easier to do math with. Uh, so looking through these, weight distribution, Z51 4060 split, so 60% on those rear tires which are driving it, versus the GT500 5644, so only 44% of the weight on those rear tires. Now, is that why this difference occurs? Well, not necessarily. So a vehicle with this weight distribution and rear wheel drive could still out accelerate a vehicle like this depending on other factors. Uh, so it's not gonna tell the whole story. Our wheelbase is very similar, both about 107 inches. The center of gravity height, both of these are guesses. This is from the previous Corvette. This is from a little bit higher than the GT350. Uh, so I anticipate kind of close enough with these, at least for our guesses in this video. And then that 0.6 second difference between the 0 to 60 times, however, if we look at the 0 to 100 times, the Corvette is now slower 7.6 seconds to 100 miles per hour versus 6.7 seconds to 100 miles per hour. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the GT500 is going to be traction limited. It's not able to put down all 760 of its horsepowers below 60 miles per hour. But then above those speeds, it's actually capable of using them uh, and it's going to have a lower 100 time than the Corvette, which is starting to run out of power here because uh, it's only got 495 versus that 760. All right, so knowing these times, one way we can try to understand why are they different is by trying to figure out what is the theoretical limit that each of these could accelerate to if they had infinite power. So just purely based on traction, how fast could either of these vehicles accelerate to 60 miles per hour? And so what we have right here may look like a mess, uh, but I promise you it's very simple. In this section right here, we have what are we looking for? In this case, zero to 60 limit, and everything in purple is our equations that we're going to use. Then here in red, we have all the math for the Corvette Z51, and then here in blue, we have all the math for the Ford GT500. And so the real thing that we need to figure out here is how much weight can we get on those rear driven tires? And the reason being is because the maximum force that we can accelerate our vehicle with is equal to the coefficient of friction of the tires multiplied by the normal force, the amount of weight that we have resting on those driven tires. And as you accelerate, obviously you're gonna load up those rear tires. So we need to take into consideration that load transfer. So that's why I said earlier, you know, this isn't detrimental. If this vehicle had a really high center of gravity, well then it could lean that weight back on those rear tires and then still accelerate at a very good pace. Uh, so we're gonna do the math for each of them here and that's based on this equation where we look at the frictional coefficient and then we're just looking at uh, a difference in where the center of gravity lies as far as on this x-axis and then on this y-axis here uh, as far as how tall is that center of gravity. And so for both tires, we're going 
tend to assume a frictional coefficient of 1.3. That's not entirely accurate. We don't know what the actual frictional coefficient is. And the Corvette is on PS4S tires versus the GT500 is on Cup 2 tires, uh, which should be a little bit stickier. But the GT500 is also heavier, which is going to reduce that frictional coefficient a little bit. Uh, so we're just going to say we're going to call it even as far as tires are concerned at 1.3 for the frictional coefficient of the tires. So we can start to plug in the numbers here using this equation to find out what is that maximum theoretical acceleration limit based on the load transfer that's occurring. And so if you plug in the numbers for the Corvette here, we get 0.99 G. So almost capable of accelerating at 1 G, which is very impressive uh, using those 1.3 coefficient of grip tires. And then we can use the equation velocity equals acceleration times time to find our theoretical 0 to 60 limit, which is 2.76 seconds. So as you can see, grip is actually uh, not the limiting factor in the Corvette's 0 to 60 time. It is probably power on that top end of that 60 miles per hour where it starts to run out. So it could be a little bit faster if it had more horsepower. Now for the GT500, we do the same thing. Now remember, so this weight is closer to the front of the vehicle, so less of it to transfer to that rear, though the center of gravity is slightly higher. We don't know what that center of gravity is, but we're just assuming very similar to the GT350, uh, could be a little bit higher. And so we do the math for that, and we get a maximum peak acceleration of 0.7. 5Gs. And so, you know, what's happening right here? Well, the difference is the Corvette is able to put 76% of its weight of the load on those rear tires under a hard launch versus this GT500 is only able to put 58% of the weight on those rear tires. And so as a result, its peak acceleration is limited because of how much load transfer it has. So if you were to raise the center of gravity, if you were to sit on top of the car perhaps and still have access to the steering wheel uh, and pedals, you could actually probably get a better 0 to 60 time. It'd be dangerous. You probably shouldn't do it. Uh, but it'd be a neat experiment to try out. Regardless, we go back to our equation, velocity equals acceleration times time, and we plug that in here to this equation, our numbers that we have, and time, or zero to 60, theoretical limit is 3.6 three seconds. And this is why math is so cool because we've kind of known for a long time, you know, Ford has put out there zero to 60 in the mid threes. Uh, and so let's say it's 3.5 seconds. Well, all we have to do to get to 3.5 seconds is slightly raise our center of gravity here. And this is predicting that 3.6 is that theoretical limit. Now with 760 horsepower, it's very unlikely that power is the issue. It can spin these tires all day. Grip is the issue here. And so grip is limiting us because of how much load transfer we have to a zero to 60 time of about 3.5 seconds, which is exactly what Ford has put out. Very cool, but it helps explain why the Corvette is faster to 60 miles per hour. All right, now let's apply that same logic to the zero to 100. So we have 7.6 seconds for the Corvette. Car and driver estimates 6.7 seconds for the GT500. So let's see if the 6.7 second number actually makes sense. And we're gonna do so assuming it's accelerating at its maximum grip with that maximum acceleration of 0.75 g's. So once again, we go back to our lovely equation, velocity equals acceleration times time, and that gives us a maximum acceleration time from zero to 100 miles per hour of 6.1 seconds. So that's the theoretical limit based on grip. And so what we're seeing here is that as you start to get to those really high uh, speeds, 100 miles per hour is quite high, you're gonna have quite a bit of aerodynamic drag. And so actually power does eventually become an issue uh, as you're trying to hit 100 miles per hour, 760 getting you there in about 6.7 seconds. Uh, the number actually seems to make good sense based on theoretical limit of where that tire could be. It is higher than that, which you would expect. And you know, you've got a, a decent amount of power, but you also have to overcome that aero drag. Now, one of the impressive figures that Ford has put out for the GT500 is that it can go from zero to 100 miles per hour back to zero in just 10.6 seconds. And we don't know what this is for the Corvette, so that's what I wanted to figure out. You know, what would the comparison be? Is the Corvette gonna be capable of doing this quicker or is the GT500 actually quicker at doing so? And so there's some different tools we can use here, but obviously we're gonna need to figure out how much time does it take to go from 100 miles per hour down to zero miles per hour. 
and then we can just simply add that to the 0 to 100 time. Now Corvette does give us a distance from 60 miles per hour to 0, and they say that distance is 108.4 feet. I do not believe this number. I think this is a highly conservative number and I think the braking distance is going to be much better than that. Uh, partly why I will show you here mathematically. And so braking from 60 miles per hour down to zero, we can figure out the distance required using this equation. Distance equals one half velocity squared over a. Now we know what our distance is. It's 108.4 feet. So we plug in the other numbers and we can find out what's our maximum acceleration force. And that turns out to be one 0.11 g's. Now the disappointing thing about this is in our previous math we're using 1.3 instead of 1.11, meaning that if this was the actual grip of the Corvette it would not be capable of a 0 to 60 of 2.9 seconds. It would instead be about 3.3 or 3.4. So that's why I don't believe it to be correct. Also because Motor Trend has tested previous generation Corvettes and they can stop in 90 feet. Uh, so I don't think it's going to do worse than this. Also, in my Tesla Model 3, which weighs 4,100 pounds, using the same tires, I have stopped shorter than 108 feet. Uh, so a significantly heavier vehicle capable of doing it. So I don't believe this number. That's a long way of saying that I don't trust that. I think it's going to be significantly better, probably closer in the 90s as far as what that actual number is. Now, for the GT500, we can calculate that simply using that grip, which we discussed previously, the coefficient of grip of 1.3. So we plug that number into our distance equation here, and we get a braking distance of 92.5 feet. So that will be our comparison, uh, 92.5. Honestly, it's probably going to be higher than that. Uh, so if we take car and driver's estimate of 3.9 seconds, from 100 miles per hour, we can figure out the maximum acceleration uh, in that, and that is 1.17 Gs. And so from that, uh, this is better than what we were guessing er earlier, from that 1.17 Gs, we can figure out what is the distance uh, according to car and driver's estimate, and that would be about 103 feet. Uh, so somewhere in the you know 93 to 103 feet, uh, the GT350 is stopping around 110, so maybe pushing on the uh, later side of that. Uh, but with these Cup 2 tires, it should be capable of a very good braking distance. Now, we want to figure out how much time it takes to decelerate from 100 miles per hour back down to 0 miles per hour. So we can once again go back to our equation, velocity equals acceleration times time. And if we use Chevy's acceleration number for deceleration, uh, their peak braking of 1.11 Gs, that would give us 100 miles per hour down to 0 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds. If we use that Motor Trend test figure of 90 feet uh, braking distance, from 60 miles per hour, that gives us a peak deceleration of 1.336 Gs, and then we can use this acceleration number to figure out how much time from 100 miles per hour, in other words, 146.67 feet per second, it would take to slow to zero, and that would be 3.4 seconds. And so now we can kind of piece it all together. So our braking distance, you know, they claim 108.4, I'm gonna say maybe that's around 90 uh, for this GT. 500, that's going to be 93 to the 103, perhaps 110 like the previous GT350. For our 100 to 0 time, we're going to be in the 3.4 to 4.1 second range. And so we add that to our 0 to 100 time, comparing that versus the GT500, and that's going to put us in the 11.0 to 11.7 seconds time, which either way, wherever it falls within this range, is going to be longer than the GT500's 10.6 seconds, zero to 100 to zero. Now, pretty impressive all around. Both of these vehicles are pretty quick, uh, to say the least. And so looking at the quarter mile times, the Corvette doing it in 11.3 seconds, uh, Ford claiming under 11 seconds for the GT500. So not a huge difference there. And reason being is because this is getting such a good launch uh, with that 2.90 to 60 uh, versus this is making up for it in the rest of that quarter mile where it's gonna start getting up to really high speeds once it can start to put all of that power down. Uh, so impressive, uh, the very close speeds here, but very different ways of going about it. And the Corvette, you know, in that useful, uh, you know, daily driving region, zero to 60 miles per hour under the speed limits uh, is going to be the quicker car. And then once you get out on a track, 
uh, perhaps this thing will start shining as a result of all that horsepower. Really cool to see these cars in person and also the cutaway of the Corvette uh, at Monterey Car Week and kind of see, you know, the engine location, just how massive that space is for the trunk, the air filters there and how the air flows, the radiators up front on the vehicle. Really cool cutaway of the vehicles and need to kind of break down how these two vehicles, both rear wheel drive, accelerate very differently. So thank you all so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.